I believe there are a lot of problems with chess at the moment, not only in terms of online chess, but even over the board chess. And I'd like to address some of these topics in today's video. It's going to be a bit more of a rant format because, I mean, I hope it's quite entertaining. Um, I have a few notes, but like it's going to be basically off the cuff. Uh, I do have some bullet gameplay in the background that I pre-recorded. So for those of you with shorter attention spans, you can focus on that and, you know, maybe pick up a word or two as I'm talking. The first topic I want to cover is the World Championship match that I think is happening in November or December between Ding and Gukesh. And I mean, both of these players are world class, obviously, because they're competing for the World Championship. But it doesn't feel like a World Championship. You like you think about Magnus versus Fabiano or Magnus versus Nepo. Like, I can't remember the exact years, but like 2019, sort of 2017 years. And those felt like proper World Championship matches. Like, Magnus is the best player in the world, possibly ever. And, you know, he's facing off against players like Fabiano, just a calculating genius. And players like Nepo, who, I mean, I absolutely love Nepo. I love the way he plays. He's just absolutely mental. Um, and, you know, these feel like insane matches because it's the best players in the world facing off against each other. Ding versus Gukesh, I, I don't think has that caliber. And I think most people would agree on this topic because Ding, you know, he inherited the world championship title, not because he beat Magnus, not even because he qualified for the world championship. He came second in the candidates. Nepo won the candidates again. Magnus said, I, I think it was um 2021, maybe 2022. It might have actually been 23. Anyway, Magnus said that he would only play against Alireza because he was currently the up and coming, well, he was the up and coming like youngster at the time. And he said, he said that he would only defend his title if Alireza won the candidates. Alireza didn't win the candidates. Nepo won it. I think... um. I think like quite decisively and they would it would have just been a rematch of the previous world championship game which Magnus won fairly fairly easy, not easily but like convincingly and he he therefore didn't want to play it he gave up his spot and then Ding because he came second place therefore qualified to play against Nepo for the world championship not because Ding was the second best player in the world but because he came second in the candidates and also I think there was um, a thing with Hikaru in that candidates where obviously people just assumed that it only mattered if you came first. I'm pretty sure he um, Hikaru took a ton of risk in one of the games towards the end because he thought he had to win. And therefore he came, I believe, third. And then Ding came second because he just happened to come second. Don't get me wrong. World-class player. I'm not saying he's bad, but he's not world champion. You you see his performance in pre in um recent tournaments because he just took a break from chess. I think there's clearly something wrong with him, like not wrong, but like there's an issue mentally there with Ding. And I've got no issue with the guy. Like I like the way he plays chess when he's on form, but he's not the best player in the world. And Gu and um Gukesh, his challenger, isn't the second best player in the world. He performed incredibly well at the candidates. And it's pretty cool to see a seven, I think he was 17 when he won it, a 17 year old, like winning the candidates and facing the world champion. I think most people would back Gukesh to beat Ding in the world championship match and become world champion at like what, 17, 18. But I'm sure nobody would disagree with the fact that Gukesh is not the best player in the world. I would say Fabiano is better. I would say Nepo is better. I'd say Hikaru is better. Magnus is obviously better. And may maybe that's it. Maybe there's no others. I mean, Prague is still really good. Ali Reza is great, but he's not as consistent as someone like Gukesh. But it doesn't feel like a proper world championship. And this is the biggest event, or it's supposed to be the biggest event in the chess calendar. And previously, when it's been players like Magnus facing off against challengers, it's a big deal. Because it is the fight for the best player in the world. It's the world championship. This time it isn't. It just isn't the world championship because Magnus won't play it. Fabi didn't qualify. Hikaru didn't qualify. 
Nepo didn't qualify. I think that after Magnus, those are probably the three best players in the world. So, I mean, it would be a great match regardless, but I think there's issues there with whether it really feels like the same caliber as it has in previous years. The second thing I want to talk about is cheating. And obviously this is a hot topic, right? Like, I've made video videos myself where I've faced cheaters, and I mean, it's just frustrating, right? Obviously there's cheating accusations with people like Hans Neiman, and I'm not really sure where I stand on that, because I can see it from both sides. I think, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether he cheated or not, um, in obviously that whole scandal that happened a few years, yeah, it was like a few, year, a few years back at this point. Maybe two. Kind of crazy. But I, I think in-person cheating is not as big of an issue. I think online more so. I mean, chess.com are closing accounts constantly. I faced many cheaters in videos that I've recorded, and you can look back on them on my channel. Uh, like, my, my most viewed video is a video where I face a cheater, and then I go investigating, and he's creating several new accounts to sandbag his main account, to like a really high rating and I mean chess.com did ban those accounts but one they were really slow like they were really slow about it and it took me and many of my viewers reporting these accounts for them to get banned there is also for those of you that you know your OGs in the channel you're in the discord server that I have you know that there's been someone in our discord community who he you know, he was a big guy there, really. Like, I played a, a game against him on video, and I lost. And it turns out he was cheating the whole time. I'm not going to name him. Those of you who know, you know. But, like, it's rough. Because he, he seemed like a nice kid. Me and one of my moderators, Loves, love you, by the way, bro, Um, we confronted him about this before like, reporting him or anything like that, and we're like, look, we know you're cheating. Like, it was obvious, right? And we, you know, we understand that people make mistakes, right? So in the same sense that Chess.com have acknowledged people like Hans have cheated in the past and they're giving him a second chance, right? Although that whole thing is up in the air at the moment because, you like, St. Louis Chess Club uh, blacklisting him and that is kind of crazy to me. I think that's possibly a bit unwarranted. Um, you know, people like, um, like Hans are a big deal, but even these small things where in just some random YouTuber's Discord server and he, he, this guy just continues to cheat. He gets, he got banned like yesterday and it caught, it kicked up a bit of a fuss in the server because this guy talked a lot. He gave a lot of good advice. He was clearly a good chess player, but not as good as he, as he was making himself out to be by cheating. And it's unfortunate. And this guy has had his account for like a long time before he's actually been banned. And there's been some games that are just obviously cheating. Just obviously. And it just hasn't been caught. I'm not blaming chess.com for this because I understand it must be insanely difficult to tackle these problems. But my th this video isn't to bash chess.com or anything like that. It's just to talk about what I think are the problems in chess right now. And cheating is clearly a problem. It just really makes online chess that much more difficult and inauthentic because you don't know if you're facing a cheater. If someone just uses an engine for like one or two critical moments in the game, that's so difficult to actually catch, but it can change an entire game because most games hinge on like, I don't know, two or three critical moves. A lot of them are obvious or they're theory or like it's just a really a move that you can really quickly play because it's like obviously this is the only move or I have to pick between two but this is clearly better when you have like three or four options or even like two options and you need to pick the correct one and an engine just gives you that is you can't really detect it because you could have just picked the right one like how can you know if that's cheating it's it's, it's just tough, because it ruins the authenticity of online chess, in my opinion. And I much, like, I, I, I value in-person chess that much more as a result of it. It's frustrating, but I actually don't know what chess.com could do about it. 
Another thing is accusations, and this is why in the video that I played against this guy that got banned in our server, um, I felt a bit off about the game, but I didn't want to accuse him of anything because he seemed like a nice guy. A lot of his explanations for his moves made sense, but he clearly wasn't that high rated. He was lower rated than he made out he was because he cheated, but I didn't want to accuse him. And I try to be quite intentional with that because accusations are thrown around like wildfire nowadays. Like it's crazy. I don't, I don't like it because when you actually just play a great game or you perform way better than you normally do, that's an outlier game. And you, you, you know how I'm going to mention now Kramnik, right? A lot of respect for the guy, but the accusations that he throws around now are absolutely mental. Like, someone will just play a game that is better than normal and be like, right, cheater. Like, what? Are you telling me that in your many years of playing chess and being world champion, you've never outperformed yourself? You've never played a game that's a bit better than you normally play? You always play at the exact same level every single time? Come on. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And, I mean, I, I think most people are against him on that. And I think that's good. But, and like, Jess.com have like removed his blog and that on the site, I believe, which I suppose is a good thing. Also, I think Bishop A3 before Queen H8 was better there. Sorry, random, <laughs> random uh, footnote. But it's, it, it's annoying. It's annoying. I think it is getting better because people like Chesbra, who I really like, by the way. I love Chesbra. Um, you know, both Eric and Aman are great. Um, I like how they address those kinds of issues, so I would encourage you to check out some of their videos on these kinds of issues, but it's annoying. It's annoying that this exists, and there was, um, there was this guy, I think, uh, Levy made a video about it, I think Chesbra did as well, this, um, like, Grandmaster who made an anonymous account, which you could call smurfing, but I don't think it's smurfing, because... If you are like a public figure, like, like like a public figure in chess, or if you're a very like known chess player, like a grandmaster, you can't be playing all your games on your main account because then people can just see what you play, see like the openings you play and just prepare against you very easily. So anonymous accounts are necessary. And that's part of the reason why I use some anonymous accounts, actually, because I know I'm not a massive YouTuber or anything, but if someone, if, if I play over the board chess, which I do, and someone finds my channel and then finds my chess.com account, it's going to be so easy for them to just see what openings I play. And I do kind of out myself in some of these videos by showing the openings that I love. But at the end of the day, I know I'm not that big that it's going to be a massive problem. So, you know, that's fine. And I can always play different openings in my over the board games. but it means that these grandmasters do have to have anonymous accounts, right? And this guy got banned for performing incredibly well from all accounts. I don't think he cheated, um, but chess.com banned him. And I mean, it's ridiculous. I understand that they make mistakes, but it, it's really rough on like his reputation, you know? And he didn't have to admit who he was either because it was an anonymous account, but he did. And I think that was a really good thing because it's bringing the issue to light. But it's, 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 it's concerning. I don't really know what can be done about that sort of thing, but it's sad that it exists. Sorry, I know this video is going on a while, but I hope you're enjoying the rant thus far. Next thing I want to talk about is um, on the topic of Chessbra is actually Hikaru and some of his comments on um, Aman, like, and his commentary and being biased against Hikaru. I mean, I think that whole thing is ridiculous. And I know this is just a case study, right? It's just a sample of some, like, of the problems within the chess, like, community and the tension between different content creators. But, like... I think this whole thing was kind of spurred off of the Magnus versus Hans problem and like the problems between different chess players, different chess content creators, 
And this kind of, kind of drama is just unnecessary. I think Aman brought up some interesting points about, like, Hikaru as a person. And I've got nothing against him, right? He's clearly an amazing chess player. And he seems like a decent guy. But Aman was saying, like, you know, you see him sometimes, the way he reacts to losing or playing, like, um, a bad game or if someone's performing really well and how angry he gets and how his personality seems to switch and it's this isn't a dig at Hikaru right this this is not what this is because I get angry sometimes like people obviously obviously have some sort of persona that they use when they record videos I mean obviously that's just acknowledging reality I am not really this energetic I mean, I don't think I'm particularly energetic when I record anyway, but I'm normally not this energetic in real life, right? I'm recording, so it's different, okay? I can acknowledge that. But this, like, tension between different content creators, different chess players, it's unnecessary. And it's just a bit toxic. Like, do we really need this? Chess is supposed to be about pragmatism, about logic. You know, these kind of petty squabbles are not logical and not pragmatic. And it doesn't really fit in with the whole, like, characteristic of chess as a game. It, I, I find it quite annoying. I don't know if I'm, you know, the odd one out there. But, you know, it just seems unnecessary. And I, I, I don't even think this exists in many other sports, to be honest. Like, I watch a lot of football. Uh, like Premier League football, I'm from England, and I love football. And you have rivalries between clubs, but between like players, this kind of thing doesn't exist very much, or between managers, this kind of thing doesn't exist all that much. So, I don't know, I find it quite annoying. The final thing I want to talk about is, I, I, actually there's two things, there's actually two things that I want to talk about, but one of them is engines and chess engines i mean we all know they changed the game of chess dramatically like the kasparov versus deep blue deep blue game two where kasparov lost and computers essentially became better than humans at chess in you know something that people never thought would happen kasparov himself said would never happen clearly he was wrong but you know people can be wrong um now that computers are so much better than humans, the game of chess has changed so much. And I don't think, I don't know if this is so much of a problem as like an evolution of the game itself. I, I, I wonder what you guys would think about that, um, but I'll, I'll delve into it. But whether you think it's a problem or just a change that is neither good nor bad, like you see these young kids, right? Like rising through the ranks and just destroying some of the older guys, especially when it comes to like opening theory, because you can just memorize computer analysis. And obviously, younger kids' brains, they're more malleable than adults, and therefore they can memorize and remember things better, right? This isn't a problem within itself because this is just biology, but engines facilitate this to a far greater degree than was ever possible before because you can just get the answers instantly. You just get the answer, and then you memorize the answer, and you do that so many times that you start to just memorize opening after opening and move after move. And these grandmasters are playing the first 20 moves of each game instantly, and they're like, oh yes, this was exactly identical to Fabiano versus Nepo in 2016, and I, I, I remember that game. Like, it's annoying, and I think players like Magnus help to stop this because they'll play obscure openings that people like kids can't just memorize because they don't really happen and i think that's a good thing um but it just changes the landscape of chess a bit because i don't want it to become a memorization game i want it to be like fun and you have to adapt and you, you're actually playing against another person rather than a computer. Like, I know that when I, I lose online games to some opening trap, right? Like, I'm, I'll, I, I lose in, like, I don't know, 
15 moves to some weird opening trap that my opponents played instantly. Don't get me wrong, I play opening traps, right? Like, of course. But it just doesn't, it doesn't feel like a game of chess. It just feels like, oh, well, he knew the, um, he, he knew the theory, he knew the opening, so, like, I can't do anything about that. And that's one of the things I've actually noticed with players like Eric Hansen from Chessbra. Like, when he's commentating his games, he's like, is this theory? That's, like, a running joke, right? But I think it kind of, like, the consistency to which he says that is kind of telling as to, like, how big of a deal it is and how much it affects things. Because theory back in the day, you would debate, is this playable? Is this not playable? I don't know. But now it's more like, oh, this isn't playable. Stockfish 207 says it's bad. So therefore it's bad and therefore you can't play it. One of the other problems that I think engines cause is engines in analysis. Because I've, you know, I play at chess clubs and I have for the past two years, right? And after you play a game at a chess club, normally you'll analyze the game with your opponent or maybe with your opponent and a couple of spectators uh, who like also go to the club or maybe even like some of the other players that were playing in the match because I mean, at least the way that I play, it's like six versus six team format, right? And the way that you analyze the game is not with an engine. You talk about it. You explore lines. You have subjective, like, oh, I think this position looks a bit more comfortable. And you don't just have an engine spew out a number. Because when the engine spews out a number, it assumes that you're going to find every single correct move. Because engines aren't human. And it causes problems, not only when you analyze your own games, because a lot of the time you'll just look at the analysis, the computer will say, this is the best move. And you go, oh yeah, that's, that, that's the best move. And you'll move on. And it's like, you have to figure out why it was the best move, because you can't just look at an engine number and be like, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it, because you don't get it. And this is what I try to do with my own analysis. You know, those of you that have watched basically any of my videos, I'll play like a rapid game, and then I'll analyze it with the engine. But I won't just look at the engine's, like, suggestion and be like, oh, okay, cool. Sometimes I'll disagree with the engine and be like, yeah, the engine might be able to win this in, like, after playing this move, but I wouldn't because I'm a human and I'm not going to play this perfectly, right? Or I don't know the exact way to win this endgame, so I wouldn't personally go for this, even though the computer thinks I should. This is the difference because that's how you improve a chess by critically thinking. Chess is a game about critical thinking. You think about a move and you'd be like, oh, it's good for these reasons, but bad for these reasons. The critical thinking goes out of the window when you look at a computer, go, oh, it gives plus six because of this move. And you go, yeah, yeah, cool. I agree. Yeah, why? You have no idea why you agree with that. So how can you just go, to, yeah, cool. That's not very like critical thinking of you. And everyone is, like, guilty of this. I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone else because I don't think like this, because sometimes I do. And sometimes I need to check myself and be like, like, Alex, do you actually know why the computer has said this? Or are you just agreeing because the computer is the mighty overlord? I think, like, you can see in commentary of, like, the candidates, especially, the candidates just gone. Um... The way that the commentators in that, like, used the engine analysis was really, really good. I thought it was perfect because they would acknowledge the chess, like, analysis, right? But they would, sorry, the engine analysis, but they wouldn't just copy the moves. They'd have the bar, but they wouldn't have the moves, right? So they'd have to fi figure it out for themselves and figure out each individual line and then see whether the bar agrees with them or not, right? And in a human way, talk it through. So you can understand how they're coming up with these ideas. Because when you have players like Magnus Carlsen sitting at a chessboard, playing a game that's like 98% accuracy, he's having to figure it out for himself with human reasoning, not by looking at a computer. So that's how you improve a chess. Not by just looking at a computer evaluation and memorizing everything. Because not only do I think that that turns chess from more of a game into a science, which I don't agree with. I think that it's not a fun way to play chess. But you can't memorize every position. You can memorize a lot of positions. But eventually, you will have to critically think for yourself.
And that's actually one of the reasons why when I study openings or play openings, I don't like memorizing everything. Some lines you need to memorize, right? But I don't like memorizing everything. I like to learn the ideas. Like, what is this opening actually trying to do? What's the point? Because when my opponent plays something weird, then I can be like, oh, I've not seen this before. But if I don't have the line memorized and I don't understand the ideas, then I can't punish it. But if I don't memorize a bunch of lines, but I know the ideas, then I'd be like, oh, this piece doesn't belong on this square because the pawn is supposed to go there or something like that. Because then the pawn can control these squares and this piece is meant to be on this square because, uh, I don't know, like it targets the vulnerable squares in the black position, something like that. That is how I think you can properly punish openings and become a better player, not by memorizing things, but by understanding the ideas. Finally, I would like to touch on Magnus versus Fide, because I think this is somewhat reminiscent of Garry Kasparov in the 90s, starting his own chess federation because he disagreed with Fide. And that caused a bit of, I mean, that caused a lot of drama at the time, right? Because the best player in the world was going against the ruling chess organization. And competition is not a bad thing because monopolies are a problem in anything, right? So, oh, by the way, in this bullet game, there's a really nice move coming up. I was quite happy with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cute. Um, anyway, um, so it's good to have competition, right? But when the best player in the world refuses to play the world championship because he doesn't like the format, and clearly he, I mean, it's a, it suggests that he doesn't value the world championship title as much as he maybe should, or as much as Fide do, or the rest of the chess world do, because he doesn't want to play classical chess because he thinks it's too easy for him, or he finds it boring. That's a problem. That is a problem. Because... What I was talking about at the very start of the video with Ding and Kukesh, Ding and Kukesh, eh, Gukesh, right? That is only a problem. That, that only became a problem because Magnus decided he wasn't going to defend, defend the World Championship title because he didn't like the format. And Fide aren't willing to budge. They're not willing to budge on that, right? And this isn't me criticizing Fide because they have, they, they have the right to do like what they think is best for chess. And I get it. They want to stick to the roots of chess. And I think that classical chess is probably the purest form of chess. So I get it. Like, but Magnus finds it boring. He thinks it's not as marketable as something like Blitz or Bullet or Rapid. And I agree. It's a, it's a different set of priorities that these two entities have, right? And that's okay. It is, it's okay to disagree like that. But to not find a compromise or have any sort of road towards a compromise existing, that's an issue. Because you have players like Magnus, um, you have players like uh, Anish Giri, Hikaru, who they're focusing more on content creation than actually competitive chess. And that's fine, but it delegitimizes Fide further and delegitimizes classical chess further because not only does the world champion not even want to defend his title which is supposed to be the most prestigious title in chess but you have players that are saying that they are a content creator first and a chess player second right and these chess tournaments are played under fide organization is this a problem i don't know maybe it's just an observation maybe many of these things that i'm saying in this video and more so observations than problems. But I think it's very interesting to talk about this kind of thing, and I'd be really interested to know what you guys think down in the comment section below, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me on some points. Um, with that being said, thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, I would encourage you to check out the video that will be somewhere around here. <laughs> Uh, quite a good video so you can see what some of the other content I do is. If you want like a part two to this video and you want me to address some certain topics, please let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.